So, hi everyone and welcome to this first video on the basic solo growth model uh, for, an undergrad for an undergraduate course. So in this particular video, we lay down okay, what the solo growth model is, what it's used for, and we discuss how production is modeled inside of the solo growth model, at least a starting point for production. So uh, in any intermediate macroeconomic course, the solo model is typically discussed. For the purposes of this first module, we're going to discuss the simplest version of the model, which was uh, developed by Solo in 1956, to be able to understand the long-run growth and the cross-country income differences across countries around the world. So it's sort of like this benchmark model by which we compare how well-off or how not well-off countries are and what got them to be well-off or not well-off based on their probable growth. So in this particular model, it's a mathematical model at that, and there are three key equations that drive the narrative. So the first key equation that drives the narrative is the aggregate production function. Okay, the aggregate production function, which we'll discuss today. The second key component of the model is the consumption, okay? The consumption and saving equation, saving equation or function. And the last one is what you refer to as the capital accumulation equation. Equation. Okay, so these are the three key equations that we're going to discuss in the solar growth model. And we're actually going to devote a video for each one of these. So um, these three uh, equations basically underpin the whole model. And what we're going to focus on here is the role of capital, particularly in how growth is sort of identified. So we'll build on to that. But first, let's discuss what production is. So production in this economy. OK, so what we do is we start. How do we define production? Well, in this mathematical model, we start with an aggregate, OK, an aggregate production function. function, okay? And uh, this aggregate production function looks something like this. So we have yt is equal to at, f, kt, and t. Okay, so notice yt here, right, basically corresponds to output. And uh, we have three components here, okay, that build up the function. We have um, this first component here, AT, which we define as productivity. We'll define that later. And uh, importantly, we have here KT and NT, which sort of is inside the function. And these are what you call the inputs of production. So we have NT, which is labor hours, hours or labor for short. Okay. And it is uh, in units of time of time, okay? And uh, what we have also is KT, which is capital, okay? Capital, and you know, capital is something that is important in the story of the solo growth model. For one, something, uh, capital is something that could be produced. So something that is produced, like you can produce physical capital. So something that is produced, it's also possible that uh, capital is something that helps in the production process. So something uh, help that helps in the production process, in production. And uh, by that context, it's possible that capital doesn't get fully used up in the production process, right? So something like as a capital stock or some capital investment may be available to you in multiple periods of time, not just in one go, right? So we have a lot of examples for that. So doesn't, oh, whoops. So doesn't get fully used up, used up in the production process. But it could be fully used up, okay? Now, 
the underpinning uh, of this all is that a key differentiator between capital and labor, which we refer to as the inputs of production, because in order for us to generate output, we need an amount of labor and an amount of capital. A key distinction between our inputs of production, which are labor and capital, uh, are the concepts of stock and flow and accumulation and endowment. So we say that capital is what we call as a stock variable and is an accumulated variable, while labor is what we refer to as a flow variable and as also an endowment. Okay, so to understand this, let's start first with labor because that's the easier case. So let's first think of what is this what do, what do we mean by labor as an endowment? Well, if you think about it, uh, because we measure labor in labor hours, we can't really add more hours in a day. So it's like 24 hours if we sort of normalize everything on a daily basis is a fixed quantity. right? So we can't, okay, we can't really increase hours in a day. The most we can do is sort of change the allocation. So for example, if you're working for 12 hours a day, the most I can do is say, I can push that up to 12, 14, 16, whatever. But the maximum that I can be is 24. I cannot scale it beyond 24 because there, there's no more hours in a day, right? So can't re we can't really increase the number of hours in a day, okay? So the, the threshold value, so this fixed, right? So 24 hours a day, that's it. And sort of, you can think of it as an endowment is if I'm allowing you to work for 12 hours, that's what you have. It's like a choice that it may be given to you and it's probably exogenous. You cannot control it. Say in typical countries, it's an eight hour work day. That's an endowment of you have an eight hour work, day, right? By contrast, right? By contrast, um, we think of capital as a stock variable. So, um, uh, sorry, as an accumulation variable, right? And when we say accumulation, okay, the uh, it it me just means that it can grow over time, right? over time, right? So if I have say capital investment today and I keep on investing in it over and over, that will probably accrue gains gains over time. And uh, that will uh, grow the amount of capital over time. So there's room for growth and capital, right? So that's what we mean by accumulation. Okay. Now, what we need to now do is sort of distinguish between these two concepts of stock and flow. So let's start first with um, with uh, with what we refer to as stock. Okay, stock. So when we say stock, it means that capital investments today today okay influences future capital okay so how do we sort of understand this intuitively well if i invest uh, say a machine say i own the bakery i invested a, i bought a machine today which is some capital equipment then the machine is probably useful to me tomorrow too not just in the immediate period right so that's going to have dividends in the future that i can gain from whereas labor is a flow variable and it just really uh, sort of un underpins basically that hours hours in the past you spend working don't really influence influence hours in the future so basically what we mean by this is your choice of how much you work today is not really a factor it doesn't really affect your decision of how much you work tomorrow unless i in, i add a constraint there somewhere but if it's a free optimization your choice today is it effectively independent of your choice tomorrow of how much you choose to work, right? So that is the aggregate production function. So this is basically the start of the solo growth model. A key equation that we have is this yt is equal to at fkt 
Uh, so let's just write it down. So equation one, okay? Equation one is this yt is equal to at, f, kt, and t. So we have the two inputs of production, capital and labor hours. And then we have this thing, which we refer to again as productivity. Productivity is a scale, right? The more productive the, produc uh, the production process is, the more productive it, um, the process is, it ends up scaling output given the same input. For the most part, we will treat this as an exogenous factor for now. But in more advanced iterations of the solo growth model, we endogenize this productivity component. But since we're dealing with the simplest solo growth model, let's exogenize it for now. So that's video one. In the next video, we're going to uh, sort of dig deeper into what the properties of this production function is. Okay. So thank you for your attention, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much.